Postseason basketball starts tonight for TCU. What do the Frogs have to do well if they're going to make a tournament run? We'll talk about that next here in Lockdown Horn Frogs, your team every day. You are Locked On Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Lockdown Horror Frogs, your team every day. I'm your host, Stephen Simcox. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And it's audio variety. Postseason basketball starts tonight for the TCU Horn Frogs, or this afternoon, I guess I should say. Tip off against Oklahoma, the 8 9 game in the Big 12 tournament uh, in Kansas City. The winner of this ball game gets Houston tomorrow afternoon. And a really good opportunity for TCU. This feels like. I guess we can't say it's a must win because I think regardless of what happens, TCU, according to Joe Lenardi, is one of the first four buys. I mean, they're not firmly on the bubble as one of the first four, uh, one of the last four in, first four out situation, but they're right there on the cusp of possibly having to go to Dayton. I think a win over Oklahoma solidifies the tournament bid. Now, CBS Bracketology has them in a little bit of a better position, a nine seed playing FAU. Um, in the one seed in that region will be UConn. Still not a great draw, but beating Oklahoma would give you an opportunity, I think, to feel really good about Selection Sunday. You don't have to sweat it. You're in the tournament for the first time in three consecutive seasons. First time the program would have ever done that. So that's a big deal, right? Um, and then you, if you beat OU today, then I feel like you go into a house money situation against Houston tomorrow. Houston's Probably the best team in the country. I think they're going to be the number one overall seed in the tournament, regardless of what happens uh, this weekend in Kansas City. If you win that game, then you go 2-0 and against Houston this year, once at home, once on a neutral floor, which is just a, a fun thing to, you know, have a, a feather in your cap, I guess. It's a great resume builder. Um, if you beat Houston, that's fantastic. Maybe you catch a Houston team that's not super motivated. I mean, that game was back in early January, and it feels like it happened about – 12 months ago. Like this is a very different Houston Cougar team. I think they're playing not personnel wise, but I just think they're playing with a lot more confidence and they fully hit their stride. TCU seems to be faltering going into the big 12 tournament. But if you find a way to pull off that upset, that's great. It's a nice boost going into the postseason. And if you win a few games here in Kansas city, I do think there's an opportunity that maybe you could jump up a couple seed lines because the big 12 is so good and victories over Houston you know, potentially Baylor in the semifinals, those would be really good resume builders for the Frogs. But if you win the OU game, I think you feel good about getting in the tournament. And then if you lose to Houston, obviously there's no shame in that. You split the season series with them and you just rest up and get ready for whatever your matchup's going to be come Selection Sunday. But I want to talk today because the last few days we've talked about kind of big picture, the looming question over the TC basketball program, which seems to be, Obviously, Jamie Dixon has done incredible things. This is a far cry from, you know, the early Big 12 days, the days of the Mountain West. Uh, This is a a solid basketball program that it feels like they're going to make the tournament most seasons, at least make, you know, the NIT. I know that's not the highest bar in the world, but in comparison to TCU's history, yes, it's a big deal. At the same time, the constant run of 500 seasons in Big 12 play. Uh, the typical year in year out debate of okay, where are they at? Are they on the bubble? Are they do they feel pretty good about being in the field? What kind of draw are they going to get? Are they going to be you know between an eight to a ten seed? That can be frustrating, and it's it's just the the age old question in college sports of you have someone who has raised the profile of your program and made it much better. Have they reached their ceiling, or do you continue down this path and be patient? I've been on the record saying I don't think anything's going to happen after the season. I feel like Jamie has earned the right to kind of regroup and redo this thing with a young core. He's got some talented freshmen coming in next year, some talented freshmen that haven't played this season, and then they'll be able to work in the portal. But I want to get away from the big picture stuff today because we're talking about the games itself. So first off, in the matchup with Oklahoma, some important news, John Rothstein – uh, from CBS Sports reported this morning, uh, Rivaldo Soros for Oklahoma and John Hoogley are both out 
Um, Soros has an ankle injury. Hughley has a knee injury. But Soros has been a really good scorer for them. He's a transfer from Oregon. He's been great lately. For the season, he's averaging uh, nine and a half points a game. And then Hughley is one of their big men inside, eight points a game this year, uh, can score with the basketball, kind of plays that four or five position. So two guys out, an Oklahoma team that has also been really inconsistent this year. TCU did play OU um, early in conference play. I believe it was like the second conference game. It was right after that tough loss to KU and Allen Fieldhouse, and they won that game fairly handily. The final score was 80-71, to 71, but they pulled away kind of late, and it got a little bit closer, but it never felt like it was in doubt. Um, and that game was in Fort Worth. I'm I'm done saying that I just think it's an automatic lock for TCU to win these games because I've been burned by that theory this year, most recently against UCF, where I thought, oh, yeah, they'll finish 10-8 in conference play because they should be able to handle um, a UCF team that struggles to score. But you got a, a good shot here to come away with a victory. Handle your business. Limit the turnovers. Uh, win the battle on, in, in, on the glass, rebounding the ball, and get out of here with a victory. And then I think you feel good about where you're at going into the postseason. And whatever else happens after that is just, you know, gravy, honestly, um, as far as solidifying your, your tournament resume and maybe possibly getting some better seeding going into the NCAA tournament. So good good chance today against what's going to be a shorthanded Oklahoma team. Also, there's some rumors. I don't – I don't put a lot of stock in this, but Porter Mosier, OU's coach, has been linked to the DePaul job, which I know Oklahoma is not a basketball school by any means, but if they lose their basketball coach to DePaul, that makes no sense to me. I mean, I know Porter has Chicago roots because he um, was was the guy at Loyola Chicago for a long time and was a great coach there, but I mean, DePaul's a Big East doormat. Like, it makes no sense as to why he would take that job other than, I guess, to get to a basketball school again or a place that wants to invest resources into basketball only. But those rumors are surrounding OU. Um, it seems like a team that might be a little bit distracted. Good chance for TCU to come over with a victory if they can play solid basketball. But I want to talk about not only this game, but looking at the postseason, what can the Frogs do to make a run here, to possibly get to the second weekend of the tournament or beyond, to make a run here in the Big 12 tournament? as it kicks off this afternoon. And I want to focus on things that are realistic. Like there's some obvious things they can do better, play a little better defense, right? Like that would help. But I feel like at this point in the season, you kind of are who you are. They're not going to become a much better defensive team. They have some good individual defenders, but they really struggle with team defense. They struggle staying connected. They struggle with their rotations. Ernest Duday being back and being healthy and uh, having a rim protector there in the lane is going to help. But I don't think this team's going to take great strides defensively over the next few weeks. However, there are some things that they've shown flashes of this year that if they can laser in on as the postseason begins, I, I do think this can be a dangerous TCU team. And for me, it really starts with you got to push the tempo and push the pace more. I think this group is at their best when obviously everyone is to a certain extent. But when they're using their athleticism to get high percentage shots in transition, and that's off makes and misses. Like off a of make, push the pace, go down the floor, especially when you get a defensive rebound, get that outlet pass out there and run. For guys like Micah Peavy, I mean, Emmanuel Miller runs the floor well. Udi and Court can do this. Um, Anderson and Nelson are really quick on the ball. Maybe you can find Trey Tennyson in transition for some open threes. It's it, This is a team that struggles in half-court sets when things get tight and they have to execute their offense and win in one-on-one situations in isolation. So try to mitigate that by getting out in transition and running. Now, late in the game, you're going to have to get buckets. And this team has to find a go-to score. In my mind, they've kind of traded off through the year. But I think the guy that's been the most consistent in clutch situations is Jameer Nelson Jr. Put the ball in his hands late in games. And it doesn't necessarily have to be him taking the shot. Maybe it's just making good decisions Last year in the tournament game against Arizona State, Mike Miles got blitzed on the pick and roll. He made a good decision, dumped the ball off to Jacoby Coles, who made a play, but allow Jameer Nelson Jr. run your offense through him at the top of the key late in ball games and let him try to make plays um, because I think he's the best playmaker and best shot maker on this team. 
Now, I mean, Tennyson can make shots, but he's more of a spot-up, catch-and-shoot type of guy, not so much off the dribble. I, I like the options of Manuel Miller. I know they've gone to Micah Peavy at times, but I really think they got they have to get the ball to Jameer Nelson Jr. and allow him to work late in these ball games, in these clutch situations, if they want to have success in their half-court sets. And then finally, you got to win the rebounding battle. If you're going to struggle defensively and you're going to give up points, then at least when teams miss, you got to make sure it's one and done. And if you're rebounding well and cleaning the glass well, that also allows you, as I said earlier, to get out and run in transition and to try to you know make things happen before the other defense gets set. Um, game against Oklahoma today, win that, you play Houston. And again, I think it's kind of a house money situation. Who knows how motivated the Cougars are going to be. Now, they could very well just come in there and say, hey, we want we want that trophy. We want a Big 12 tournament title to go along with the regular season title. Um, but I think today is really the key. Make sure you feel good about being in the postseason at the end of this afternoon, and then whatever else happens from there is great. Maybe you can kind of play with your rotations and mix and match a little bit um, as the tournament goes on just to see if there's anything you find late in the season that could be helpful as you get ready for tournament play. But 2 o'clock today, TCU in Oklahoma. Oklahoma missing a few key pieces. Uh, Rivaldo uh, Soros, the guard, and then John Hoogley, the big man, both out. And both are considered day-to-day, but obviously we're really only concerned about the fact that they're out today against TCU. So the Frogs lose, and they're on their way home, and we'll have to uh, sweat it out come Selection Sunday. When we come back, TCU baseball, nice bounce back win against DBU after dropping that series to Kansas. Who was the hero? Are they starting to figure out this pitching rotation? We'll talk about that next year on Lockdown Horn Frogs. It's your team, and we do it here every day. If you need parts for your vehicle, you cannot play around with your ride. It gets you everywhere you need to go. Make sure you check out eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy and also what keeps your ride alive. eBay Motors says everything you need to maintain your vehicle or level up peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Over 122 million parts for your number one ride. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. All the parts you need for the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. Uh, That Guaranteed Fit program is only available to U.S. customers. eBay Motors, try it out today. Make sure you don't mess around with your ride. Level it up to peak performance at ebaymotors.com. TCU Baseball, they get a 9-6 victory over DBU on Tuesday night. Uh, Ben Hampton started this game for the Frogs, but the real hero of this ball game, because once again, starting your rotation, not going deep in games. Ben Hampton, two and a third, four hits, two runs. One of those was earned, uh, notched one strikeout, didn't walk anybody. But Luis Rodriguez came in. He got the victory. Uh, Three and two-thirds innings. Four hits, seven strikeouts. He had that uh, curveball working. Fastball was giving DBU fits. That's a really potent DBU lineup that he held down, and he studied the ship. Ben Hampton gave up an early run um, that was helped by a Chase Brunson error on a single that turned into a double, essentially. And then DBU worked that guy around to score, take an early one nothing lead. And then TCU took a 4-1 advantage shortly after that. Um, Logan Maxwell continues to just absolutely rake. He's hitting the ball really well. He had a big hit in that inning to bring a couple runs home. But Frogs went up 4-1. It got to 4-2, and Luis Rodriguez came in and really shut things down after that. Good atmosphere there in Dallas. That's always a fun midweek game. It wasn't a super clean game by either team. There were, you know, multiple errors. DBU had a big error in the eighth inning. Um, Frogs were up 6-2. Looked like DBU might be able to get out of a, a sticky situation. And um, uh, I think it was Chase Brunson that was up. Yeah, it was Brunson that was up at the plate. And he hit – I mean, it was a hard ground ball, but it was obviously a ball that you could make a play on. And the second baseman was moving to his right, and the ground ball just ate him up. And so it got by him. Two runs scored. Brunson reached on an air. Silver and Burn came around. That put the Frogs up 8-2. 
Um, as it usually is with the bullpen, it was kind of an adventure late. Chase Hoover continues to struggle for TCU. He only got through a third of an inning, gave up a couple of runs. Uh, Kyle Ayers came in and closed it out, and he gave up a two-run homer. <laughs> Uh, but he also locked it down after that, got a couple strikeouts, um, and got out of that game. So TCU with a win over a top-20 opponent, this is a good DBU team. They've always got multiple arms, man. They just get out there and throw. The lineup looked better. Um, they scored in bunches again. You know, it wasn't just consistent all day long. They had four runs in the third, um, came across with a couple more in the sixth, and then uh, three more in the eighth, which – really, you know, helped kind of solidify things and give the Frogs some cushion. But took advantage of some errors, took advantage of some sloppy play um, by DBU. Chase Brunson continues to hit the ball well. He had he had a RBI double. Um, again, as I said earlier, Logan Maxwell had some big hits. Curtis Byrne had two run singles. So Peyton totally out of the lineup again. You know, he dealt with a hamstring injury on that Friday night game against Kansas. Uh, series against Oklahoma this weekend really pivotal that this team bounces back. I mean, it's super early, and I feel fine about where they're at. I think that was a big response last night, just playing well, getting that victory on the road. Uh, but coming back home against OU, you, you don't want to drop another series and fall to 2-4 and four in conference play. Yes, you've got all the time in the world here to kind of make up that deficit, but you still, want, you still don't want to put yourself in a bad situation. Um, curious to see what that rotation looks like, though. Uh, and even though it's a home series, it's going to be tough if you are, are having to kind of mix and match on Friday nights. Super impressed, though, with Luis Rodriguez. And he was great at the end of last season. I mean, honestly, as good as Cole Klecker was, at times you felt like Luis late in the year was their best pitcher. Um, and the fact that he wasn't available, like it didn't seem like a huge deal in the moment. I guess it did because they were so thin on their pitching staff, but – I didn't necessarily expect TCU to make a trip to Omaha. But, man, if, if Rod if Rod could have started some games along with Stoutenborough and Klecker, that would have been a more formidable rotation um, in the postseason. He, unfortunately, was out with an injury. But he's looked really good coming out of the pen. I mean, he's had his moments, but overall has been one of the most consistent arms out of the bullpen so far. So I wonder how Kirk kind of manages that. Because, yes, part of, like, part of you – is tempted to say, hey, throw him in the rotation because you want him throwing as many in as possible, which I understand that line of thinking. At the same time, though, it is so valuable to have somebody like that. Um, and Cayman Parker kind of falls in this category as well, even though he hasn't been as consistent as Luis Rodriguez has been so far this season. But to have guys that can eat those middle innings if they have to, right? So, okay, your starter runs into trouble early in the game. Get Luis out there. Yeah, I'm not sure how available he'll be this weekend. He threw like 54 pitches in that game against DBU. Um, also, it seemed like he started to get fatigued after, you know, almost four innings of work. So I'm not sure how much he's ready to be stretched out into a starting role. But he's been super valuable for TCU so far this season. But hopefully they'll get back to hitting the ball again like they were early in the season. Um, they And they hit the ball well last night. But I'm just saying returning home, playing Oklahoma – We'll see what the starting rotation looks like um, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Would love to see Cole Klecker cruise into a groove. It just, you just want some some quality starts. I mean, um, that's that's been the big thing to me. Is can somebody eat some innings and not tax his bullpen so much? Because that is a, a tough thing to um, maintain if your your bullpen arms are having to go five or six innings each and every night. But huge win. Against DBU, nice response after losing that series to Kansas, and uh, they move on to 15 and two uh, overall, and then have a chance to get that Big 12 record right this weekend against Oklahoma um, when they take on the Sooners. When we come back, we'll take some comments from you guys and wrap things up. It's Locked On Horn Frogs, your team. We do it here every day. We talk about them every day here on Locked On Horn Frogs and across the Locked On Network because FanDuel always has great deals going on. FanDuel.com slash Locked On. They've upped the bonus bets. Um, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if one $5 bet wins. So go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On or download that FanDuel app. One $5 bet, you win that bet, you get $200 in bonus bets that you can then experiment with and play around with. FanDuel.com slash locked on. You can bet on college hoops, 
Conference tournaments going on this week. NCAA tournament will start late next week. Perfect time to start throwing some money down. Don't just leave it up to your bracket challenge. Do round-by-round round bets at FanDuel.com. You can also bet on the NBA. Major League Baseball starting up soon. FanDuel is the official betting sponsor of the NBA and MLB. Also, the NFL, they cover all the sports. FanDuel.com slash locked on or the FanDuel app. One $5 bet, you win that bet, you get $200 in bonus bets. Thankful for uh, FanDuel being a sponsor of the Locked On Network, your team every day. So, in yesterday's show, I talked about a, a couple SMU linemen, Branson Hickman, whose dad, Brandon, is now a uh, coach at Dallas Jesuit and a former frog. And Marcus Bryant, both graded out really well in pro football focus. Both were all-conference selections last season. Bryant's a tackle. Hickman is a center. Um, They're both making a visit the weekend of March 23rd, which will be when spring practice starts for TCU. They're in the transfer portal. And if they could land both those guys, I think it could really help solidify um, this O-line group for the upcoming season and just help this offense overall. And a couple of you had thoughts on this. CJ said, I watched a lot of Samir Comancho out of Houston the last couple of years. Really nice player. Is he uh, here for the spring? Yeah, Comancho is one of the guys they brought in. He's from Cy Falls. Um, he's, he's an offensive tackle. And he was actually a, a late flip from Maryland. Uh, great size, 6'3", 285 pounds. And he's not here for the spring. So he is um, He's going to be a, a, a fall guy. He'll be in uh, when fall camp starts and, and when classes start there in August. And, you know, all these players, like the reason they're hitting the portal so hard at the O-line position is because, yes, they're recruiting um, the high school ranks at a, a rapid pace. They're trying to get better in the trenches. But guys like Mitch Hodnett, um, we mentioned uh, Comancho, um, Wesley Harvey, uh, Chris Brister from Stephenville, Tobias Steps from Lancaster. Like all these players, I think are going to be more developmental players over the upcoming uh, couple of seasons. So it's going to take some time to get them ready to play. They're not going to be ready right away. And typically when we're talking about O-line, D-line play, unless it's just an absolute like can't miss prospect, it's pretty rare for guys to get a lot of snaps as true freshmen. Now, Ben Taylor Whitfield did it last year. And I, I guess it kind of depends on your perspective what you thought about that, I think the optimistic view is, hey, he's – they think – the coaching staff thinks he's one of the, you know, six or seven best linemen as a true freshman, which was the case because as soon as Brandon Coleman went down, he was the guy they called off the bench to get out there and try to make things happen. The flip side of that is um, typically if you're starting a true freshman at, at guard, that means that you've got some issues in, with depth – in your own line room. And so I think they're trying to, to build that up with the guys that they've been landing here in the portal. Uh, Justin McGuffey said, I want a shot at the 12-team playoff this season. We were historically snubbed the first year of the 14 playoff, and I hope we can rewrite history in this new era. I mean, I, I think this team will have a shot for a Big 12 title. Now, some things are going to have to go right, but I, I feel like this is a wide-open league. And I think it's going to be that way for a while. Now, how – Great is that from like a narrative perspective or a popularity perspective. I'm not sure. Um, but as far as TCU goes, like what it means is if you continue to recruit at a high level and bring in talent, especially through the portal, you should have a chance to uh, to make this happen. And so um, big, you know, big year for the Frogs in a lot of respects, but an opportunity. I think they definitely have an opportunity to go win a Big 12 title and, you know, some things left to fall into place. I'm not going to pick them as a favorite to start the year, but I think that that ceiling is there if they can play well and get it done. And then, as you said, Justin, you get in the 12-team playoff and you kind of see what happens. Um, so is it going to be more difficult now to possibly go on the road and win a game and then go win a bowl game? Sure it is. But you get in the dance and then you have the opportunity and you see what your team can do, and that's what TCU is looking for and pushing towards this upcoming season. We'll be back tomorrow, and we'll have a recap of uh, that big game this afternoon, TCU and Oklahoma. Basketball, football, everything here. Locked on Horn Frogs, it's your team, and uh, we do it here every day.